to ask him some questions. What's it like doing your job? Is it exciting? Yeah, police work is very exciting. Police work in general is exciting. It's al always uh, there's always something new happening. You ne when you come to work, it's never never two days are the same. So uh, and then I know you were interested in what happens on the SWAT team. Mm -hmm. And many years ago, I was on a SWAT team, and that was really exciting. That's like the uh, the higher levels of excitement. Have you ever got shot? No, thank goodness I never have been shot, and I've never had to shoot anybody. Um, but I've been in situations that have been very close. What kind of training do you do? Um, the training, I know you're more interested in SWAT, in the SWAT area uh, of law enforcement, and the training for SWAT is, is, um, is uh, very intense. So along with the physical training that's involved, which SWAT officers generally have to be in, um, you know, probably the best shape of, of anybody in the police department for the most part um, because of the demands that are put on them when they have to act as a SWAT officer. They may have to run distances. They may have to climb flights of stairs. They may have to break doors down. Um, there's a lot of things that require a lot of physical exertion. And then you need to be able to also uh, manage people. So the training is physical, first of all. You have to keep yourself in very good shape. You have to be physically fit, but there's a lot of mental training that goes on as well. Um, a lot of the things that SWAT officers do are orchestrated. They're practiced over and over. It's like a play. You, we, you know, when you're doing a SWAT type of uh, action, maybe a raid on a house, and you try to get the floor plans for the house and get the layout of the house and have an understanding of what's inside, and then if you can, you can re you try to recreate the basics of it before you go there and practice how you're going to go and you work as a team to clear the house in a very um, expedient way and very safe way. So not only with physical training but mental preparation as well. And, and then there's technical preparation. You have to know all the tools that you have available to you. Many, time in SWAT, many times in SWAT teams they'll use um, uh, low-grade explosive devices. They may use flashbang grenades or um, uh, or explosives to blow doors off uh, hinges so that they can gain entry. Uh, those are very technical um, pieces of equipment that you really have to know what you're doing with. So you have to be experts in the area in these areas. Um, you, the weaponry you use is a higher quality of weaponry than just uh, you know a handgun that most of the police officers carry on their hip, and you really need to know all about um, the guns that you're using. And uh, so there's, there's technical preparation. Um, physical preparation and uh, expertise and expertise in the area that you're going to be working in. How many years have you worked in SWAT? <coughs> I was I was on the SWAT team for uh, just about ten years, um, from uh, like uh, 1986 to 1996, right in that in that area. Um, and uh, during that time, there was a. Uh, in the, in, the, in the United States at that time, there was what they had what they had going on was called the war on drugs. Every the federal government was putting a lot of money into uh, police departments in order to try to combat the drug epidemic that was occurring. So we, we did a lot of raids on houses that were suspected of being drug raids, uh, d drug houses. Uh, when I was on the SWAT team, why did you choose to become a SWAT officer? Um, that's interesting. Uh, quite frankly, the excitement. Uh, the uh, it was it was uh, a, a lot of interest to me because it was uh, it's a very exciting position, and you got to get a lot of action. You know, I was working in a town, working here in Reading, that you know, fortunately, is is relatively quiet most of the time. You know, we don't have a lot of high-profile incidents that happen. But by being on the SWAT team, I could experience uh, a level of excitement. And and, uh, and and as well as it required me to bring my level of expertise up. I had to learn new stuff. I had to learn about different weapons. I had to learn about different tactics and things like that and uh, preparations. And I had to keep myself physically fit. So it gave me a reason to stay in shape, too. Why did you leave SWAT? Um, at the time I left SWAT, the police department here was uh, going through some tough economic times. And the chief at the time had made the decision uh, because of the cost of having somebody on SWAT to withdraw uh, some officers from that area. So uh, he, he 
downsized in this commitment to the regional group. Our SWAT team is part of a regional group. The town of Reading doesn't have its own SWAT team. The re there's a regional group called the Northeast Mass Law Enforcement Council, and there's 60 communities that are part of that, and, and each community contributes people um, to different parts of the organization. And so I was able to participate in that team as, as part of a regional group. So we covered a big area uh, in the northeast of Massachusetts. And um, I was on the team with a lot of guys from different departments in the area. What education is needed? Um, well, to get on the police department, you need to have a high school graduate, high school education. But, uh, you know, to really, that's what's required. But in, in reality, because of the competition uh, to get these jobs, to get on a police department today, you really need to have uh, a bachelor's degree or an equivalent. So you maybe some military experience would help to achieve that. But um, college education is, is preferred in most police departments today. And in order to go for specialized units like that, you definitely would want college education. Maybe I, I've got a master's degree. A lot of the people that I was on the team with had master's degrees. What advice would you give to someone who wants to become a SWAT officer? Um, I think that um, probably the, the, the best advice I can give, there's, there's two key components to wanting to be, uh, to be successful on a SWAT team. First of all, you need to be uh, in the best physical shape you can possibly be. So you have to keep yourself you know, in, in good shape. You have to eat right. You have to eat vegetables and fruit, things like that. You know, you need to get a lot of exercise. You need to keep yourself strong. Those, that's that's a, that's a number one, a number one requirement. The second part, part of the requirement is you need to be educated. You need to have a college education um, because of the technical aspects of being on the SWAT team. College would be a, a must to get on that team. What types of crimes did you? come across as a SWAT officer? Um, a lot of the work that we did, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of the work we did had to do with uh, drug enforcement, drug raids. Um, we did a lot of work in some of the neighboring cities. Up in Lowell, for example, was very active. We did a lot of drug raids in Lowell. Um, but also we had situations where there were um, people with mental health issues that had barricaded themselves in, in a house uh, with weapons. Um, there were other people who we who had done committed robberies and had been chased into a into a into a house and were hiding in different parts of the house and we had to go in and clear the house and uh, and get them out and take them into custody. Um, there were there were a lot of a lot of uh, different types of crimes that were committed that we interacted with people about. Well, thank you for letting me interview you. Okay, thank you for interviewing me. I enjoyed it.